I, I don't preach once saved, always saved. I believe you can pick up your own will, your own life. And I believe you can walk a million miles away from Jesus. And I believe that it's a very scary, bad thing. Because once you have the knowledge of truth and walk away, that's, that's worse than if you ever heard in the first place. So I believe that people, there's so much scripture that we can turn to about that. There's people that let their hearts get hard or whatever. They've tasted the goodness of the Lord. And then they let life be their teacher or whatever. And they don't come that way. I've seen people go, I, I'm not saying that just because you backslide, you're, 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 you're cut off. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if you don't return. But here's the scary part. Some people carry that theology that, hey, God will always love me. Hey, he knows my heart. I'll go here. He'll forgive me. That's a non-repentant heart. That's a dangerous, scary, awful place. Don't anyone even consider living there because there's no place for repentance there because you're truly not in godly sorrow. You're actually playing a definition of grace that isn't true. See, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of teaching on grace nowadays. And everybody's calling it the grace revolution and stuff. And there's a lot of teachers concerned. And the reason they are is because it's grace preached apart from transformation. If you're preaching grace apart from transformation, it's perversion. The reason for grace is transformation. Grace is what changes your life to make you more like him. Grace doesn't just allow you to keep living however you're living. That's, we get mercy and grace confused. Mercy brings you back when you have no right to come back. But grace transforms you into his image. So everybody's talking about grace. You have to be careful. We're not just actually talking about mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. And it's the goodness of God that leads men to change. It's always been about repentance. John the Baptist, Jesus, and Peter. Repent for the kingdom's here. Repent for the kingdom's here. Repent. So what this brother's talking about is he's saved, he's moving in God, something happened. You know, you get deceived along the way. You get deceived. You can let something just catch you, hurt your heart. You can lose a loved one and just stalemate for a while and just be in a funk and not even realize four years went by. And all of a sudden you could be like, where have I been? Come on, that doesn't mean you're evil and wicked and you're going to hell. You just let life speak louder than truth. But when your heart sees it and realizes it, and you go, oh, and you actually care, that's, that's, that's your born again, in, that's your inside man, your inner man crying out. So Jesus is loving and merciful and we grow. I don't think we have to lose that kind of time, but there's people that if you read, there's a lot of scriptures. It says Jesus can come and find you eating, drinking, and beating your fellow servants. That means bashing, backbiting, gossiping, demeaning, and he comes, and you're in that place, just feeding your flesh and talking about your sisters and brothers. And he says, you'll be cut in two and giving your portion with the unbelievers. That's pretty heavy scripture. He's not talking about a backsliding person. He's talking about a person that's disregarded the position of their heart and said, whatever. You can really become apostate and walk away. There's too many scriptures to talk about. The big reason there's a fear with the one state always say because people live on the edge. That's dangerous. No, you sell out and you give yourself to him and you don't pick your life back up. Living on the fence, there's no fence. There's just no fence. So the whole once saved, always saved big debate that's out there in the church, the only reason the question's viable is because men like to live on the edge. I've found that to be true. They want just enough of God to feel saved, but just enough of them to enjoy whatever, and that's Dangerous, scary, dangerous. You deny yourself, pick up your cross and the following King Jesus. And if you find yourself in trouble along the way, man, the, the Spirit of God in you, I believe, in, in your own conscience can bring you back to Him like His testimony. But let me just say this. If you're just watching porn in the secret and doing church and saying God loves me, no, you better face that. That's a compromise of conscience. You're graying yourself out. And you're misusing grace. That it's not cool. And it's not talked about enough because we always it's all about grace. Well it is, but if your heart's not crying over that, then something's wrong inside. You become cold, you become callous, you've just got a grid to do something that's way out of the box and then find a way to say, Well, God loves me. And, and that stuff ought to make us cry. I've seen people use drugs that knew they were going to use drugs in a moment. And then I've seen people use drugs and cry wanting to know how to get free. There's a difference in the heart. 
You follow what I'm saying? So God knows the heart of every man. But, but there's, a, there's, a, there's a place, my buddy Todd, you guys know Todd, when Todd first got saved, he would call me crying about using. And I was excited because it's the first time in his life he ever cried about using. You say, well, he was still using. Yeah, at least he was crying. It's a start. <laughs> Before that, he was thinking how he's going to steal from his own mom or wife or, or Jackie then, girlfriend at the time, to use it again. And there was no repentance. There was no tears. And all of a sudden now he's crying. And I'm like, whoa, this is awesome. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. But isn't it the Lord that changes the heart? Yeah, but you have to give your heart to him. You have to give him the land you <laughs> You can't just sit and, and put it on God and say, well, you're going to have to do something with my heart. You're the steward of your heart. The Bible says, guard your own heart, for out of your heart flows the issues of life. But God's the only one that can change your heart. So if you start by asking Him... Absolutely. Grace begins to make that desire your reality. See, grace is what changes us, guys. When I preach on becoming love, I say, the first thing you need in your heart is a yes. You have to want. You hear what love is and you have to want to become loved. If you hold on to your own rights or the way you feel and think and say, well, then you're going to keep the grace that changes you into his heart from coming into your heart. But if you just say yes and get along with Jesus, I so want to become one with your heart. I want to look through your eyes. I want to see men like you see men. I want to walk in love with Jesus like you walk in love on the earth. I give myself to you. That's an exciting time in prayer. Because grace comes to make your faith your reality. And it takes your heart expression before God and makes it you. Without you biting your lip trying to love better. You get it? Whoever tried to stop being angry and you felt like you were failing. You don't try to stop being angry. You put off anger in prayer and God changes you on the inside. And all of a sudden you're not trying to bite your lip. It just doesn't touch you that way anymore. Why? Because grace changed you. You're saved by grace through Faith. No faith, no grace. You release faith in the truth. Grace comes to make truth your reality. You guys with me? That's how prayer works. So your communion with God is what changes your life. Now if you don't take that to heart, and you don't get serious about that in prayer, and you just live out of your feelings, your thoughts, or oh well, or you know, sometimes you feel this way, hey, everybody goes through that, and you just, you'll find yourself trapped in a, in a law in the flesh where you have spirit going and flesh going, and that growing process, it wanes that growing process. I challenge everything that doesn't look like Jesus in my life. And I take it in prayer. You guys follow me? I go to prayer with it, and then... Between me and him, I release my heart to him, so grace makes what I desire mine. And then who gets all the glory? Because you're the one that believed he's the one that changed you. If we changed ourselves, then we have good Christians and bad Christians. Like, we have expert Christians and not so expert. No, we're just believers, right? And we're saved by grace through faith. 